You're watching Celtics Today by Chat Sports. We have some big news on Jalen Brown. A report coming in from the Boston Globe. We'll get to that in a second. But first, make sure you subscribe because free agency is coming up. The draft is coming up. If the Celtics make a move, we're going to have you guys covered. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, turn on your notifications. It's the best way to stay in the loop. With all things C's, it is going to be a wild off season. The best way to stay in the loop, subscribing to the channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button below. Adam Himmel's back of the Boston Globe with this big update on Jalen Brown saying that all signs point toward the NBA All-Star signing a mass extension with the Boston Celtics. NBA Central tweeting this out moments ago. The Celtics do not intend to trade Jalen Brown, who of course has been in a lot of trade rumors, and all signs continue to point toward Brown signing a five-year, $295 million extension, that's a lot of money, with Boston per Adam Himmelsbach of the Boston Globe. Now, is this the right decision from Boston to give Jalen Brown, who let's admit kind of struggled in the playoffs, the max? Type Y for yes or N for no down in the comments section. Is this the right decision from Boston to give Jalen Brown and Max? Again, this is not official, but the Boston Globe is reporting uh, that it is going to happen in all likelihood. Taking a look at what this extension is going to look like. Uh, so it would begin uh, this new contract in the 2024-2005 season. He would make $50 million. Then the next year, $54 million. After that, $58 million. After that, $62 million. And then in 2028-2029, $66.66 million. That's enough to buy uh, plenty of uh, Sam Adams pints over there. Uh, it lands down in Boston. Jalen Brown put up these numbers with Boston last year. The best year of his career, at least statistically, 26.6 points per game, 3.5 assists per game, 6.9 rebounds per game. Uh, he shot 49.1% from the floor, 33.5% from three. However, he was not as good in the playoffs those numbers down, especially when you look at the series against the Miami Heat. He is a big reason uh, that the Celtics did not advance to the NBA Finals. In fact, a lot of people blaming him, blaming his playoff performance for the reason the Celtics had a disappointing end to the 2022-2023 season, losing to the Heat in seven games in the Eastern Conference Finals. We'd appreciate you sharing this video. We're trying to grow the channel before the draft and before free agency. Here is how you share the video. Get this out to your Celtics friends and family on social media. You're going to click the share button, select the Twitter icon, and then click post to Twitter. We'd appreciate you doing that. Helps us grow our channel here on Chat Sports. My take on the Jalen Brown extension that appears very much likely to happen. He's pricey. We just saw those contract numbers. It's not going to be cheap, but this is a move you have to make because we know, and some people maybe outside of Boston will disagree with me on what I'm about to say, but you can win a championship with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown as your top two guys, period. You know how I know that? Because they were this close last year and then very close again this season. One win away from the NBA Finals. They didn't get it done. But I think if you run it back, you add some pieces around them, this team can win not just one NBA title, this team can win a couple NBA titles with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum as your top two guys. Now, do they need to completely run it back with the same roster? No. They need to change some things. But Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown have been fantastic. Those need to be your top two guys moving forward. It would not have made sense to trade Jalen Brown unless... He didn't sign an extension. And I said a couple weeks ago when the season ended that they were going to have to make a call on JB one way or another, either extend him or trade him. And I said the only reason you should trade him is if you offer him $295 million, and he still says no. But now that he, it looks like at least according to this report, that he's going to sign the extension, 
you should absolutely get this done. Lock Jalen Bryan up long term, and then maybe next year, lock Jason Tatum up long term as well. Try to win a championship with those guys. Got the NBA draft coming up on Thursday. We are looking forward to it. You can watch our Chat Sports main channel coverage, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. Victor Wimanyama going to the Spurs, but who's going to the Celtics? We'll have to find that out. The Celtics pick at number 35 on Thursday night, early in the second round. And unlike ESPN, we're not going to have commercials, right? Nikola Jokic got drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. Not going to happen when the Celtics pick at 35. Be sure to subscribe to our main channel, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Looking forward to seeing you all there. I'm going to be a part of that coverage on Thursday night. Grant Williams could get moved before then, potentially, maybe after then. But Adam Himmel's back in that same story uh, that you know had maybe the Jalen Brown extension saying that was on the horizon, also reporting that teams have inquired about a sign and trade when it comes to Grant Williams. Now, Williams is a restricted free agent, so that's why it would be a sign and trade if you were able to move Grant Williams. Here are some teams that he has been linked to. These are the five teams I've seen linked the most. The Miami Heat, they were actually going after him at this past trade deadline. Uh, it didn't happen, obviously. The Dallas Mavericks, the Milwaukee Bucks, Orlando Magic, and Indiana Pacers, all teams that are expected to inquire or perhaps have already inquired about Grant Williams. Do you think the Celtics should bring back Grant Williams, type one for yes or zero for no? Down in the comments section, you tell me, chime in down in the comments, should the C's bring back Grant Williams? Now let's get in to this mock draft from the ringer. Who do they have the Celtics picking at number 35 overall? That would be UCLA forward Jaime Hawkes at number 35. I would love this pick. A lot of mock drafts I've seen have Hawkes Jr. going before pick number 35, but if he's on the board there, I think he should be the guy. Taking a look at the numbers he put up in his senior year at UCLA, 17.8 points per game, 8.2 rebounds per game, 1.5 steals per game. He shot 48.1% from the floor. And when you look up the definition of winner in the dictionary, a picture of Jaime Hawkes Jr. comes up. This guy won a lot of games during his tenure at UCLA. He's the guy I've seen linked to Boston the most. We've seen Sasser. We've seen James Nagy. We've seen some other guys linked. But he is the guy that I have seen mocked to Boston the most, which gives me some optimism. He's going to be there at pick number 35. Should the Celtics draft Jaime Hawkes Jr. out of UCLA, D for draft, P for pass? Down in the comments section. Go down, chime in, let me know what you think. Kevin O'Connor said this, Hawkes would become an instant fan favorite as a glue guy. With playmaking feel and hard-nosed defense. It's unclear if Boston will keep this pick, though. Sources say the Celtics are exploring ways to bolster the roster, whether it's a sign-in trade involving Grant Williams, interesting, during free agency, or something consolidating their plethora of guards. What will Boston do with pick number 35? That is a question uh, that we all have right now. I think they're going to keep the pick. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Celtics TV. Again, we are going to have you covered with all Celtics news and rumors throughout what's going to be a busy offseason.